hello welcome and thank you for watching this video so i wanted to talk about this book that i have been looking at um but feeling like it was a little out of my price range right now also it's a large book it's like just over 500 pages and i don't really have that much space and not the kind of thing that would be a good ebook so that's an introduction to why I don't actually own this book, although I think it's worth owning, and that's why I'm making this video. But my library system was kind enough to acquire it, and so I'm able to borrow it. And I thought I'd just give a quick look through and explain why I'm so excited about this, even though I don't own it. So the reason I was initially attracted to this book is because of all of the illustrations. Um, I had seen a creator who was celebrating the fact that one of their cards or illustrations had been selected for this book, and that's what turned me on to it in the first place. And so I had thought, oh, it's just going to be um, a collection of artwork because that's what this uh, publishing house, Toshin, is known for. Really beautiful, really beautiful books. Um, so that's why I was looking forward to looking at it. Um, and then I found out that it's actually a little bit more than that. So I'm just kind of randomly flipping through, but now I'll take a somewhat more organized approach. So it starts out with this section called Stepping into Obliv Oblivion, The Evolution of the Arcana. And it's a collection of essays, sort of. Yeah, they're essays. Um, that just sort of explains the early, uh, although that's a modern illustration, um, steps, Stepping into Oblivion is explaining the history of the tarot. And I thought that was just fascinating um, because my understanding is pretty superficial. But look, it's not that much to read, right? Um, and you get this really great introduction. So it's, it's doable. You know, some of the esoteric books are very uh, word heavy. And I think a lot of us are attracted to the tarot because of the imagery and how it invites us in and reading the meanings from the images. So I like that this is image heavy, imagery heavy uh, and text light. So you can still learn so much, um, but it's just not so heavy. It's accessible, that's my point. And that's why I like this. I mean, they're actually talking about a book called, or a treatise called, A Way to Entertain Yourself with a Deck of Cards from 1770, um, which is, it says it's thought to be one of the first books to explore tarot as a means of fortune telling and become a hugely influential text, inspiring the symbology of many tarot systems to come. And then it gives you an illustration with these, these cards. Um, and then here's the one that, you know, most of us are very familiar with the uh, RWS, uh, Pamela Smith's illustrations. So, and then, but they, they're choosing images from all different periods in history. So for example, here we've got something from two, 2003, 1940, 2017, 1475, 2018, 2015, those are all the years, right? So it's very, it's a lot of information, a lot of different kinds of illustrations. And then we have this lovely timeline. Remember those from school? So helpful. I always found them helpful. So that's the beginning section, not that much. Look, you can get a history of tarot with lots and lots of pictures in that small amount of space. Then they go on to part two talking about the archetypes, the major arcana. So for each card, you've got several illustrations. And for those of us who like to work with multiple decks and uh, sort of comparing the imagery and getting uh, readings that focus on different aspects of the card, this is super fun, really super fun. So one of the cards that I have the most trouble with, um, which was a prompt in uh, Don Michelle's um, 
Boho Tarot Facebook group this week uh, is the devil. I have a hard time with this card. Um, and I'm a Capricorn, so it's a card that I try to pay attention to. Um, but really just sort of getting that meaning of this card without finding it frightening is, you know, something I sort of struggle with. So it was really great to just open up this book and to look at these different images. Um, yeah, Pagan Other Worlds. I'm thinking this is the one that uh, was celebrating that they have been included. Yeah, probably. Anyway, I digress. But so here's a lot of different images of the devil. I don't have to get locked in to uh, the RWS image, which I find intimidating. Um, right, so I don't, I feel like for me, the devil isn't necessarily a really unattractive character. So this one's like a little easier to, to get for me. So, yeah. So that's a good example of just a practical application of this book, aside from its just extreme beauty. I, the, the quality of the reproduction is very, very high. I don't know if it's going to come across in this video or not. I tried to use natural lighting. Um, it is a matte uh, page, so there's not it's not shiny, which is very nice. You know, some art books get very shiny. Um, when you get to the minor arcana, you do not have uh, examples of all the different cards. Um, so I thought I would just walk through my favorite suit or element, um, pentacles. Again, I'm a Virgo, that's why. I'm not Virgo, I'm a Capricorn, that's why. Um, so, you know, like an overview of the suit, and then just a few cards from the suit, not everything. So I'll just be quiet and let you look at some. Okay, I'm not going to be quiet. I, I like this a lot. That's from 1986, Barbara Walker's Tarot. So, all right, and here's one from Japan in 1982. Okay, this is just never going to come across my, uh, my path. I'm not going to stumble on this in Barnes & Noble. But here's one that I can look at and really enjoy. All right, and then this last section, part three, visionary exploration, the progression of a practice. So this is a smaller section. Well, this last bit is the index and bibliography and stuff. But this much, this is about how tarot has, um, as, a, as an art form, how it's fit into culture. Um, and it's got some pictures of creators and uh, influential figures in the development. And then it's got some interesting... Um, illustrations, artwork that has been inspired by tarot or inspired by this, the, the culture around tarot, like this one. Uh, so this is a, the star, we recognize it as the star, but it's a big sculpture, a water fountain in Tuscany. Um, and I think that we're all, those of us who really love tarot, we do see how it, it plays out in in the real world, if I can use that term. I mean, the tarot's the real world, right? Okay, so there you go. Um, there's, I think, a couple of spreads in the back here. Yeah, but nothing nothing unusual. Uh, and then just this is just about the collection, the Library of Aster... Uh, oh, boy, I can't pronounce anything. About this Library <laughs> of Esoterica. Because um, this is one book in a series. So I hope you found this little walkthrough interesting. Um, take a look. It could be in your library. Uh, so you might not have to invest in it to enjoy it. Maybe you get lucky like me. I hope you are doing well. I wish you only the best things. I wish you resiliency, love, and an optimism that carries you through the rough times. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.